Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. My name weekly editor Martin Kremer joins me today to unpack the latest news in the mining industry. Welcome, Martin. Thanks, Vishnu. Can you tell us about hydrogen's role um, as a global energy solution? Yes, I think this was posed this week by one of the biggest publications in the world, Forbes, which said that green hydrogen is on its way to becoming the new oil. Now, we've been looking at that for quite a long time now because the Germans have created a situation where hydrogen can be transported like oil. It'll have like an oil skin over it. So this poses big opportunities because if you can transport it and trade it like oil, you are now replacing oil with something that's clean, green, and cannot be competed against when it comes to protecting Mother Earth. So that was a big boost coming through there. But then we had the hydrogen discussion day in Joburg here, and that brought out so many possibilities for South Africa. But it also indicated that, you know, beyond 2030, the rise in demand and the rise in the outlook for green hydrogen is like a hockey stick. It's going to be exponential. So although you think, well, 2050 is when we need to get to <laughs> zero, that's not the case. If we don't do something in the next three years, our competitors are going to just outdo us. You know, and we one of the countries that will have to have derivatives to transport the green hydrogen, turning it into green ammonia and other derivatives. And we see that Namibia is already starting to do that. We see that Hive is wanting to do that at um, Kucha. But we don't have what, what they were complaining about this week, what they call an FID, a final investment decision. <laughs> That's what they want. But I see yesterday in Europe there were final investment decisions and in the uh, United States of America, final investment decisions, not necessarily on green hydrogen, but on hydrogen. So some see, you know, even if it's blue hydrogen coming through now, you replace it later with the green hydrogen, bringing green hydrogen, you know, down the, the cost curve, which is going to be important. But a lot of discussion, a lot of headlines flinging around the world, left, right and centre. So it's very good. Now, there is talk um, of the market development of the full PGM's basket being essential. Yeah, you know, they're talking about uh, the, the elements that are in this basket being promoted, being marketed collectively, but also individually, but not just promoting platinum and palladium and not just having platinum and palladium get all the headlines. Because, you know, you've got iridium coming into the scene, ruthenium. You, every now and again you get uh, rhodium in the headlines. And so what they need to do is to really look at market development, smart market development. Because what has happened in the past, you know, platinum got a fantastic niche in the automotive industry in catalytic converters because of marketing. And <clears throat> what they're saying, it's like, uh, you know, the rule of the arc. You, you build the arc. And then you know at some stage the flooding is going to happen, then you float. So that is, you could see that was a very great keenness this week at the Platinum Group Metals Industry Day, where there was collective vision. People were talking marketing like they'd never spoken about it before. And so I think that we're going to see market development that is going to take us beyond the automotive industry. We can already see that, you know, when Bill Gates pitched up in Texas and said, wow, you know, this energy transition is going faster than I even hoped. He was looking at an enterprise that is funded partly by a South African linked platinum promoting group, you know, AP Ventures. So the marketing has been taking place. So you have seen AP Ventures swing around the world and take you know, stakes in various research that is going on that will definitely benefit the um, demand for platinum going forward. But we need to get also something very substantial like we've had with those autocatalysis. And then we've got the hydrogen you know, and we've got the fuel cells. So there are a lot of things happening, uh, but we've got to boost platinum group mes metals demand. It is so important for the Southern African region and the world, because this is really the only genuine solution to climate change. Lastly, tell us about the idea uh, to use South African underground mines as batteries to store energy. This is a fantastic vision. You've got this mine. It is 
filling up with water all the time. You've got disused mines that are getting to the top of filling up with water and you need to deal with that. The vision now, and uh, I think uh, the former Anglo-American CEO always used to say this, is that these mines are big batteries. They are huge batteries. You've got the water in there. And what happens is the mines are cooled with this water. And you know the temperatures down there were hot, so they had to have some sort of cooling water. So you had these big reservoirs on surface. When you needed to cool the mine, you would allow gravity to take that water quickly down underground. What they realized many years ago was that that water has got kinetic energy. So if you put in some wheels there, you can spin those wheels and you can create energy. They're thinking about this in a much bigger way now. That you know, you're not only going to make sure the water is used properly, but you're going to make sure that when the water goes down, you get a lot of energy for use. And then when you want that water to go up, you use sun and, and solar power and wind power that we've got in abundance as well to then get that back into the top reservoir. reservoir. And you keep doing this, and it becomes a massive big battery that you can actually put onto the uh, the grids because the mines are all linked to these already. They've, they've already got transmission networks. They've, they've got everything you need to fill in to the bigger picture. So some big effort needs some collective vision now to get this going. I'm sure individual mines will, will be doing it already and many of them want to do it in a much bigger way. But at the same time, you know, this can really benefit local communities because if you've got that sort of energy there, there's always some surplus that you can put, give to the local community, cheap, you know, green energy. And um, <clears throat> there's also the labor that you can provide, and, and that'll be largely local labor. And if you go this route, it's so different to these batteries, these chemical batteries that people want to do, because those have to be imported. That's your money going out the country. Whereas this expenditure here, will largely, overwhelmingly, go into local pockets. And that's what we need. Thank you for speaking with us, Mark. Great pleasure, Stephanie. That's it for today. Join us again next week for more news analysis on the local and global mining industries. To subscribe to Crema Media's Engineering News and Mining Weekly, please email subscriptions at cremamedia.ca.za.